This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 617 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by EquestrianCollections.com. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is from Dr. Wendy Ying. Dr. Ying is co-host of the Driving Radio Show here on the Horse Radio Network and a doctor of veterinary medicine who practices traditional Chinese medicine in her practice, Five Elements for Animals. She is also an active competitor in the sport of combined driving and also enjoys fox hunting. Today's tip is about harness fit and its effect on your horse's soundness. But first... A word from today's sponsor. Hi, Glenn here from the Horse Radio Network, and I'm here with Debbie from Equestrian Collections. We're doing something a little different this week because I just learned about something, and I've been doing Equestrian Collection commercials for three years, and that is I love your reviews, but you actually have kind of a cool review program. Yes, we do. We have a review contest. Um, If you write a review on our website... We, each month, pick a reviewer of the month. That reviewer gets a gift certificate from Equestrian Collections to be used on our site for any product that you like. And at the end of each year, we pick a reviewer of the year, and that reviewer gets a $1,000 gift certificate. Wow. And so what we'd like you to do is you don't even have to have bought it from us. Uh, We would like you to, but you can go on to any of our products, click on Write a Review, And put down your experience with that product, and um, we will put you in the kitty for uh, for a um, gift certificate. Now, they would prefer you actually own the product. That would be a good thing um, (laughs) to do the review. (laughs) Yeah, it has to be something you're familiar with. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's terrific. So so each month there's a $75 winner, and then at the end of the year, a $1,000 gift certificate. How do you pick out of all those people that write reviews? Look at... um, how how it's written, it, it has nothing to do with whether it's a positive or a negative review, but we look at, um, try and look at well, the review that most helps people understand about the product. Be it, be it good or bad. We want um, people to be able to look at our website, go to the reviews, and get good, honest feedback about these products. And so we try and pick the, the reviews that most help other people. And to do that, you go to equestriancollections.com. That's equestriancollections.com to uh, review some products and be entered in this terrific giveaway. And now, enjoy today's tip. Today, we're talking about harness fit and the lameness issues associated with it. So, uh, you say, how is this Chinese medicine? Well, Chinese medicine is all about balance in your life. Well, the, so, the Chinese would have almost had to invent the harness, wouldn't they? I'm sure they did. They invented everything, everything else. else. <laughs> God, you wouldn't have spaghetti. noodles. Chinese yeah, spaghetti. invented spaghetti. <laughs> exactly. Fire, the wheel, everything. <laughs> okay, but seriously. But, God, um, sorry. <laughs> anyways, harness fit is a big issue. Um, and some people don't think about it as being a large issue as like saddle fit because you think, oh, well, I'm not sitting on them. But your horse has to pull a lot of weight. And some horses are pulling like almost their entire body weight by the harness. And as I talked about last week, they really aren't pulling. They're actually pushing against the front of the collar. So that's a great place to start is the collar fit. So, um, in some horses, it's easier to fit a collar than others. Um, and there's two different types of collars. There's the full collar. Um, and in full collars, there are draft types of collars. And then there are um, the show types of collars. So fitting that collar is really, really important because it sits on the shoulders. And they push against it with their shoulders and their, their pecs. 
So if that collar is not fitting, I think a lot of us have all heard about Sweeney. And that's when the nerve that innervates the, the muscles of the shoulder gets damaged and then they have atrophy there. So by the time you have Sweeney, that's like a huge issue. Like that has gone on too long. So that's why it's really important to make your collar fit before, you know, to make sure your collar fits. Is Before there a way to, start to out. tell us over, you know, the radio whether a collar is fit? How do you, it's how, a little hard over the radio, yeah. but what you do is you put it on the horse, and then you want to make sure that it's sitting. And, and that's the thing. There's like a sweet spot, and some horses have a big one, a big sweet spot in their front end, and others are very hard to fit because they can't push on their shoulders on the on the points of their shoulders, right? Because that's your shoulder joint. But then you don't want it to hit the trachea. Because you don't want them leaning against the trachea. Like, you know, if you push on your trachea right now, it makes you kind of have to cough and it hurts. Your trachea is sensitive. So it has to sit in between the trachea and the, and the points of your shoulder. But the collar, of course, um, should lay flat on the horse and, and, and it should contact as much of the horse as possible. So if it's only hitting at the bottom and the tops, then that collar probably doesn't fit. And sometimes collars can be, um, they're usually stuffed with uh, uh, straw. So sometimes they can be molded a little bit to fit. And in fact, um, in the old days when they had coaches, they would carry a straw collar with them. And that straw collar could be adjusted. That was the spare collar. The straw collar could be adjusted. And it was much easier to fit that than the leather covered collar. Ah, okay. Because you could bend it a little bit more. With draft collars, I'm not really... um, that great at fitting those. I haven't had that much experience with draft harness, but the draft collars tend to be, have a wider surface area because the drafts are pulling a lot heavier weight. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. And some people do feel like, um, even with foreign hand and combined driving, uh, that the wheelers should wear collars, full collars, because there's more contact area. So that if the horses are pulling more weight that they need the, to spread that force out on the biggest surface area. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. So then if we're talking about breast collars, um, you know, fine harness tends to be uh, cost a little bit less. So sometimes when people are buying their first harness, they go on eBay and they buy this harness and they say, oh, look, a single harness for $400. So they buy that. And if that's a fine harness, fine harness are made to do uh, light buggies in the ring. Right. So they tend to be thinner pieces of leather, like that front breast collar might only be like you know, two inches wide, maybe only an inch wide. So that's fine for like light work just in the arena. But if you're going to try to pull a marathon carriage, you know, up and down hills, down the road, whatever, that's too small of a surface area for your horse. It never was a problem. We we had that when I bought, and I wanted, I do want to talk to you about harness because as a new driver, yeah, um, you know, we had, we bought it from the Amish. So it was a heavy duty, you know, it was a heavy duty fine harness. Right. Um, uh, we used the breast collar, but I didn't have that problem of it being too narrow because my pony pulled the cart with the reins, so it wasn't a problem at all. He never <laughs> oh, well, that's good. <laughs> so. Glenn, that's, a, that's uh, another subject that we'll talk about at a later date. <laughs> he never touched the breast, or she never touched the breast collar in the entire 10 years I drove her. My arms were the extension of that. That's uh, funny. Yes. Um, well, saying. also, that's, that brings me to another point. Thanks for the segue, Glenn. <laughs> Uh, you were driving that pony in a two wheel, like Meadowbrook yes, type part. Yes. So that's a lighter carriage. And also those, uh, breast with big collars wheels. with big wheels. So it pulled nicely, but, um, your angle of draft was straight, yes, right? Because yes. like it went straight from the, the traces went in a, in a line that was perpendicular to the ground. Correct. Yes. So th- that's what those breast collar harnesses were made to pull. Okay, you so they're not saying? meant to be in an angle at all, really. They can be, but there's a lot of pressure. Like you have to imagine, you know how it buckles yeah, around over the neck, right? Yeah. That neck strap. If if it's, it has a big angle of draft, like down to a, a, a marathon carriage, then there's a lot of force right there where that angle comes, mm-hmm. like where the where the neck strap goes into the the neck. The breast and collar. because of that piece of leather is actually at an angle, then it's almost like cutting at that point. It's yeah, so it's it. pulling down on the neck. And sometimes you'll see atrophy of the nuchal ligament, which is the ligament that attaches the withers to the pole. 
so that it's the top of the neck of the horse where the mane is. Sometimes you'll see like a big dip in front of the withers or you'll see like atrophy there. So atrophy is never a good thing. Atrophy is a big red flag that your harness is not fitting. You need to do something. Okay. Um, so, uh, so in that case, uh, there are some kind of shaped breast collars that allow a different angle of draft. And those are sometimes called S collars or empathy collars. Um, also, um, Friedman makes a ring there at that point. So the tra- so there's a breast collar, and then there's a ring, and then the trace is attached to the ring. So when it changes that angle from perpendicular to the ground, and then to like whatever the angle is to go down to the single tree, it doesn't pull down. It, the the trace just slides on the ring. So that's a very good solution, too. Now, when you're first starting out, like we were, we knew nothing, and it was pre-internet days, so there really wasn't, right. we couldn't go on the internet and look. It was in the ancient times. Uh, we, you know, <laughs> we were kind of out there by ourselves. We had never, my wife, uh, you know, worked for a standard bread farm and knew a little bit about right. driving, ground driving and, and driving, you know, in the sulky. But we weren't really drivers. So we go out and we go to the Amish place and we buy the harness and we buy the cart and everything. We come home and we got this pony that knows how to drive and we don't. Uh, so <laughs> we never knew until we started, we joined the, the Red Rose Carriage Club, whether we even had our harness on correctly. And the right. one area that was always a concern that we always did wrong and didn't know it was the breaching. It's where is that breaching supposed to sit? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, in a, in a lot of ways, I think that's a personal preference. Okay. But basically, it has to be below the point of the butt, right? Right. Because if it's not and you stop, it's going to go up and then your cart's going to crash into your pony and then it's not going to work, right? Right, right. Then it can't be too low because it can scoop the legs out from under the pony. Right. But also, um, you know, it can cause some muscle pain if it's too low. So it's this balance that you have to find. I also find that um, sometimes people read books or stick by very strict rules about it has to be one hand here or this or that. And that doesn't always work for every situation. Like I like a britching very loose if I'm going to do combined driving because um, we ask the horses to canter and I like my horses to be free in the carriage when they canter, not to be hindered by britching. And I've had a lot of horses that don't like to canter in the carriage because the britching's too tight and they buck at it okay. because yeah. they're, t- you know, their legs are taking a different range of motion there. So if you say, oh, I just want one hand, the tightness of the britching is just one hand. Well, first of all, my hand is a lot different than your hand. And if, is that a pony or is it a draft? But also, what are you doing? Right? I mean, are you driving a marathon carriage with brakes? Or you're driving a Meadowbrook with no brakes. Right, which makes a huge difference. Yeah, so I think that's something that you need to use your common sense and look at the situation you're in and fit it accordingly. You you know what I'm saying there? Yep, yep. So if you are feeling in the back of your mind like, wow, I I feel like my britching is too tight, but, you know, this person told me I have to put one hand in. Well, if you think it's too tight, you need to do something about it. You know, try it and see. Now, with that brings up the other issue that we used to have. I hope I'm bringing up issues that people who are, you know, new to driving or who have never had any instruction are asking in their minds, you know? Yeah. And, and the other one is the shafts. At what angle are the shafts supposed to be perpendicular or, you know, uh, horizontal to the ground? Are they supposed to be angled a little? You know, where are the shafts oh, supposed to sit? Well, technically, okay, so that's balancing a two-wheel cart. Right. Right? Yep, yep. So technically... I want a two-wheel cart here, yep. Yeah, if everything is working out, it should the shaft should be perpendicular to the ground. Okay. And the seat where you sit should be like the box should be so that it's flat so the driver is not leaning forward or back. Okay. The thing is that if you lived in a perfect world and bought a carriage that was made for your pony, that would work out. Right. But that doesn't always work out. So sometimes you put the shafts perpendicular to the ground. But the carriage is tilting down a little, like maybe your pony's too short. So that would be putting too much weight in the shafts if your care if your if your shafts are perpendicular to the ground. 
So, so sometimes you need to put it back a little. You need to raise your tugs a little bit to balance the carriage. And it's almost better to have it, them uh, sticking up a little in the front than pointing down. Well, pointing down is never good because that's okay. a little dangerous. Right. Okay. But also sticking up, if it's up too high, then you have to think. Like with singles, uh, they have a belly band, like the false mm-hmm. yep. girth. So now you're putting a lot of pressure there. And I've seen some horses that get very sore there, like they're very girthy mm-hmm. when you're tacking them up. And their ribs get sore because the carriage is bouncing and it's banging on their their barrel. Right. You see what I mean? At the girth? And I, so, I, I have seen that when you were talking about the carriage being actually loose is what it is. Um, yeah. You know, I have seen that more than any other mistake, I think, with new drivers is they tend to not have that. They tend to not have those shafts tightened. So right. they are bouncing too much. Yeah. And that causes a, that leads us to another issue is the, the saddle fit. Mm-hmm. Um, I see a lot in driving horses. uh like the, you can see where the saddle was. Like they have atrophy of their back muscles where the saddle was. And I, that is never good because you want your horse to come over their back. So you want those back muscles. Like that's really important that they're healthy and working. So like I said before, atrophy is always a sign that something is not right. And that could be from too much weight in the tugs like what you were saying with your carriage being balanced. Um, Sometimes I see that because the, um, the way the harness is made, it could be very curvy, like the saddle, the the pads of the saddle could be very curved. So really what's only the only thing touching the saddle while you think you have a four inch saddle, maybe you only have one inch that's in contact with the horse because it's too much of a U. It needs flat pads. You know, and that happens in riding saddles, too. You never want those panels of your saddle to be round. You know, you want it to be flat right. to spread the weight on the horse as much as possible. Then this is my hugest pet peeve. Okay, like the back strap of the saddle. And you know what? I, Jamie would actually love this topic. The back strap of the saddle goes to the crupper, right? Right. In the olden days... The front of the saddle attached to the overcheck. That dreaded Black Beauty yeah. overcheck. And Black Beauty couldn't put his head down, right? Right. Because the overcheck was there. So in modern driving, we take the overcheck off. But if you keep the back strap really tight, like that's another thing. Oh, in the, all the old books from the 1800s, you know, it was like you put one hand there because you don't want this floppy back strap. Well, if you ask your horse to go round over its back, it's going to lengthen its spine. That could be like six inches is going to lengthen its spine, right? You want him to stretch down as far as he can. Well, if you have a tight back strap, how is he going to do that? He's going to get a wedgie, right? It's right. attached to his tail. Basically, yep. <laughs> so it's going to pull up on his tail, and then what's going to happen to the saddle? It doesn't have the, the uh, overcheck, right? So it's going to tip back. It's going to rock back. So even if you have nice flat pads, when it rocks back, all the weight is on the back edge of the pad. And then the only other thing holding it is the girth, which is attached to the f- uh, false martingale, which is attached to your collar, right? Right. But that's only attached in the front. So then you get this pulling, like if, if your false martingale is too tight because you don't like a floppy false martingale, then that pulls your saddle forward and pulls your saddle and, and, and tilts, it pulls your girth forward, sorry, and tilts your saddle back. So that, the, just that one thing can create all of those things going wrong. Yeah, so I prefer, I know that I know that my equipment is floppy when I go out on marathon. I can't tell you how many safety check people said, you know, this is really loose. And I said, yes, I know. Thank you. You know, this is how I'm going to drive. And I know maybe it doesn't look great, but especially with a single, with pair, you sometimes have to, there's all different issues, which I'm not going to get into now. But, um, I think if I'm asking my horse to use his body in a certain way, I can't restrict him with the equipment that I have on him. 
makes that's sense That's unfair. To me. Yep. Yep. That's, that's, and I know there's people that disagree with you, and, uh, you know, that's fine. I mean, if, if, feel you, free. if, you, if you do want to disagree with her on that topic, uh, feel free to post it on our Facebook page, and we'll start a discussion about it. Right. But if you're feeling like you have issues, like, does your horse carry his tail crooked, or is it up all the time? Or do you have atrophy on your horse's body somewhere? Or they're girthy. Those are all things that maybe you can rule out a saddle, a harness fit issue and solve a whole lot of problems. Well, there you go. We could go on and on about how to fit harness properly, just like we can go on and on about how to fit saddles and bridles properly. To listen to all of Wendy's tips, just go to horsetipdaily.com and go to the experts drop down menu on the left. You can also go to her website, fiveelementsforanimals.com. Use the digits, don't spell it out, 5animals, five 5elements4animals.com. Five if you just can't get enough of Wendy and Glenn, you can listen to them every week on the Driving Radio Show, drivingradioshow.com. And don't forget, support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they make these podcasts possible. Today's sponsor has been equestriancollections.com, and I'm heading over there right after the show's over, and I'm going to enter that review contest. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover on the show. You can subscribe to all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zoom and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zoom, or MP3 player. You can also listen to the shows right on Facebook. The player's right there every day. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, go ride your horse! The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.